Hello, uh, this is Barrett at Cypress College, and uh, in this video today, I'm going to go over the CCNA3 um, Packet Tracer 2.2.13. So this is point-to-point, -point, single area, OSPF v2 configuration. Um, and I, I know that there is some other really, really good detailed uh, videos of this on YouTube, but uh, a large part of this is me just kind of uh, wanting to do additional practice myself and presenting it and explaining it, um, which is a good learning tool that I would recommend everybody as well. But yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, jump right in on, on into it. So this is essentially the, the start of the CCNA3 class. You're learning about uh, more details about OSPF, um, which is open shortest path first. So this is essentially distributing routing information uh, within auto a single autonomous system, and it allows for redundancy. Um, if a particular router goes down, algorithms get run to determine which is the shortest path um, for information to travel from that point. So essentially what we're looking at in this lab, there, there's three different methods of configuring OSPF. Um, you could use uh, based on networks and wildcard masks. Um, we could base it on specific IP addresses and quad zero masks. And then also we can we could uh, configure the interfaces themselves. So like gigabit ethernet zero slash zero slash zero, uh, the serial interfaces. Um, then we'll look at enabling passive interfaces. So this is usually the local area networks. You don't need them to have access to this OSPF. Um, this will cut back on bandwidth. And there's also um, security benefits from that. Um, so you're only worried about um, the connections between um, these routers here. Um, and then we'll, we'll take a look at just verifying what we do. So first thing we need to do is configure our router IDs. Now, these three here, I know that they look like IP addresses, but they're actually not. They just use that 32-bit um, system uh, that is also used for IP addresses. Um, in this lab, they, they keep it simple. So router one is we set it to 1.1.1.1, router two, router three, etc. cetera. Um, from my own research, I have found that in the real world to make sure that these actually don't uh, confuse somebody with IP addresses, you might see something like 0 .0 0.0.0.1 and 0 .0 0.0.0.2, for example. But um, in this lab, obviously, we need to uh, get these completion points. So we do need to add these, these values in. So let's get started on router one. Uh, we'll set the router one router ID. Uh, first thing we'll need to go to um, from user exec mode into privilege exec mode with enable, uh, configure terminal, enter in global configuration mode. And now this is where we interface with the router with OSPF and we need to choose the process ID. So we see here we're going to use a process ID of 10. Um, process IDs don't need to be the same across every router, but it is best practice. And obviously from an administration standpoint, um, that would make a lot of sense. It would be easier on the administrator. So once we're inside here, you'll notice that the um, prompt changed to config router. And now we run router I dash ID 1.1.1.1. Okay as simple as that. And so that takes care of that for router one. So we come to router two and do the same thing. Go into global config, router OSPF 10. So we're running the same process ID and router ID. Remember, you could always use tab to complete your, um, your commands. And router ID 2.2.2.2. It gives us the points over to router three, same deal, router OSPF 10 for the process ID, router ID is three, all threes here. All right, so we're at 16%. That takes care of part one. So we've configured those router IDs. 
So let's get into the first step of OSPF routing, which is using um, the actual networks. So when we look at R1 here, and remember, we do have um, the addressing table here that might be helpful at some points, <clears throat> but I'm going to show you another tip uh, once we get to part two on how you can even not use this and just remain within the command line. Um, but when we're looking at networks, for R1, we're going to have to configure for the LAN1 network, which is 192.168.10.0 um, and 10.1.1.4 and 10.1.1.0. Now, the important part about this is the wildcard masks, and this is going to be related to the subnet mask. So let's start with the slash 24. Um, I'm sure by now you're in CCNA3, you know that a slash 24 subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. Um, let me pull up notepad. Now, essentially what we need to do here is take, in every case, we take all 255s and we subtract whatever the subnet mask is of the the CIDR notation that we're working with. So in this case, it's slash 24. So these are obviously all going to be 0, 255 minus 255 is 0, and 255 minus 0 is still 255. So the wild card is 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.255. Now, when we look at these slash 20, or I'm sorry, slash 30s, um, so remember, IP address, a subnet mask for an IP address is 32 bits. So this is basically 30 network bits. There's two left over. So that's a value of if you follow, you know, the 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 power the powers of two. You know, you start at uh, one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, etc. Um, so we're basically adding the one and the two because those two bits left over, so that's three. So that means that the wild card for that is 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.3, right? So with that information, we could set this up. And you'll see the command um, here. So we run network, um, the network address, followed the, by the wild card mask that we just determined here, and then the area. And area ID. So we're all we're going to be working in area zero, which is <clears throat> uh, standard for, for this. Okay, so let's load up R1 and we will go ahead and set these uh, network commands here. So um, from the router uh, config router mode, we'll say network. Uh, let's start with the LAN 1 address here, so 192.168.10.0, and then the wildcard mask, 0.0.0.255, and then area 0. And now let me move this over. So if we consult the, our topology over here, we have these two networks as well. So network 10.1.1.4. This is a CIDR notation of 30. Um, so the wildcard mask is 0 .0 0.0.0.3. And let's go ahead and do the same for the 10.1.1.0, which is over here. Wildcard is the same. All right, so that takes care of step one on router one. Now we'll move on to router two. And this one will be using um, the IP addresses themselves. So no, no longer the network address, and we're not gonna be doing the wildcard, so there's no math involved. Um, we will instead use quad zero masks, which we, which we remember quad zero is just 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0. So let's load up R2. Now, you could scroll up and grab the IP addresses from the addressing table here. Um, I'm going to show you another trick, though. Um, you know, maybe you run into a situation where you don't have that. Um, when you're in the router config, um, you could do show 
IP interface brief. And I purposely causing this error to happen to remind you that, okay, if you want to run that, you would need to be back in um, user exec mode. Now you could type in exit, go back to that, run that again, and then come back to the configure router. But it's much easier to just add the command do in front of that. So no matter where we're at, we're still in the config router area. Say do show IP interface brief. And this is where in a scenario that you don't have easy access to a table like this, um, it's going to give you the IP addresses of your interfaces. So these are the three that we need to configure here. And the command is very similar. Uh, so we still start with network, um, followed by the IP address, and then quad zeros and area zero. And then we do that again with the other two. So 10.1.1.2, quad zeros, area zero. 10.1.1.9, quad zeros, area zero. And now you see um, the effects happening. We're going from loading to full. Because um, remember, everything that we do here takes place instantaneously um, in the. Uh, running config and then remember anything any changes you make um, as an administrator you need to do that copy run start to take your running config and move that into your startup config all right so that takes care of step two now finally step three we'll move on to r3 and in this case we're going to work directly with the interfaces themselves so um once again, you could refer to the addressing table. We're looking at these three interfaces. Um, or you could also do uh, do show IP int brief like we just did, and you can get that information here as well. So we know that we're working with uh, G0 slash 0 slash 0, serial 0 slash 1 slash 0, and serial 0 slash 1 slash 1. So in this case, um, we need to interface with each of those directly. So int g0 slash 0 slash 0. You see the prompt change. We are in configure interface mode. And now IP OSPF. And this is where it's important to know the process ID. So remember, we were working with a process ID of 10 and then area 0. So this is going to be the, the exact same command for all three of the interfaces because they're all running under this uh, process ID of 10. So we'll interface with S0 slash 1 slash 0, and I'm just referencing this up top here. I'm going to press up two times. Remember, you can always press up to bring up your history, the history buffer of commands. So I'm going to run that exact same command and then move into the final serial interface, press up a couple times. And that takes care of part three. We are at 83% completion, so we're almost there. And now, finally, we need to configure passive interfaces. Um, remember, like I said in the beginning of the video, you normally want to set the interface that's facing the local area networks as a passive interface because it's not necessary to have OSPF enabled there. Um, now, generally, this is going to be the gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0. You could reference the addressing table here, and you see, OK, that is the one that's related to all of these local area networks. Of course, you could also do um, do show IP interface brief like we've been doing to uh, verify that information as well. So let's start with R1. And you'll notice in the lab here, we, we do this straight from the config router. So just in case, let's say if we weren't in that area, I'm going to exit out of there. We're just in global config mode. Remember that this is 
to access that, you do router OSPF and then the process ID. So process ID of 10. We're back in configure router. And this one's just simply passive dash interface and then the interface. So it's G0 slash 0 slash 0. Got the points there. And we just go ahead and do that on R2 and R3. So here we're already in config router. So passive interface, G0 slash 0 slash 0. And you know, uh, you may run into situations where these interfaces are not always uh, the same. So you always want to do your uh, due diligence and, and double check and make sure you're setting the correct interface. Okay, so here we're in config configuration of an interface. So we need to move into router OSPF 10 and passive interface G0 slash 0 slash 0. Cool. That takes us to 100%. And now if we wanted to verify, um, show IP protocols is definitely your friend and you need to be back at user exec mode. I could have done do show. But let's see, show IP protocols. This is really nice to ch double check that the passive interface is set correctly. So, um, you may run into issue where maybe this is set to the wrong interface. You need to fix that. Um, now on this one, we don't see any routing for networks because remember this is the one that we did um, direct to um, the interfaces. We actually didn't didn't set up uh, for networks on this one. But if we went into R1, for example, actually here I'll do do show do show IP protocols. On R1, you notice that we have this information here, routing for networks. It tells us um, which network, the wildcard mask, and the area. And then we also see the passive interface set up here. So if you're ever doing troubleshooting and you notice that maybe the network IP is wrong or maybe the wildcard mask is wrong, for example, um, show IP protocols will uh, be a big help for you there. Great. Uh, that concludes this lab. I hope it was, hope it was helpful and see you in the next one.